Hey, Mom, come and record the Drift Dad. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Drift Outfitters in downtown Toronto, Ontario. Drift Outfitters is your source for all things fly fishing. From waders and boots to thread and feathers, Drift has it all. Check in on their website for their latest updates and policies regarding shopping during the pandemic. Curbside pickup for your online and phone orders is a great way to get the gear you need. And they're shipping for free across Canada on orders over 100 bucks. Visit driftoutfitters.com to learn more. Driftoutfitters.com. Hello and welcome to another episode of SoFly. It is uh, the middle of August and uh, we're back recording another podcast. It's like 40 degrees outside here in Southern Ontario and actually up in Tamagi where Aldo's at. My name is Mitch Aldo. How's it going? Uh, good, Mitch. Um, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, you know, uh, it was just me and Aldo. Don't have Yelma here today because he's busy working away. Um, but we do have a very special guest on the show today. We're very excited to be chatting with Tim Ponsloff. Uh, Tim is from Denmark, Wisconsin. Uh, he founded the Spay Company in 2005 after being frustrated with not being able to find an affordable click and Paul reel in the new market. Tim, under the Spay Co. banner, designs beautiful reels built with function and utility in mind. They come in a wide variety of different sizes. Uh, they feature different finishes and hardware options, and they really give uh, the customers the chance and the ability to customize their reel or leave it all up to Tim's design. Uh, for Tim, getting to meet many different anglers from all over the world, learn about their fishing lives, and hear about their fishing reel needs is his favorite part of the job. Helping manifest the creativity of anglers into a quality fishing reel is just as rewarding. Tim firmly prescribes to the belief that you can accomplish any goal if you set your mind to it and pour your heart and soul into the adventure. He certainly proved that to be the case with the reels he makes. They are absolutely beautiful. I've got one in the mail. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Uh, our <laughs> steelheading season here in Southern Ontario is right around the corner. Uh, but today we have Tim on the show. Tim, welcome to SoFly. Hey, man! Thanks for the invite. Th- that was a that was a nice intro. Yeah, no, was, was well done. Thank we'll you. To, Thank uh, you. Oh my God, Mitch, transcribe nice. that onto the blog, man. That was that was that was really well done. Was well, awesome. you know, I took it from uh, I took it from the website, so uh, you know, I got to say, I think the words are all yours. But we're so so super excited to be finally chatting because you and I actually began correspondence a couple months ago when I when I hit you up for uh, for a new reel. Yeah, man. I gotta say, man, yeah, it's been uh, black and silver skin. He heading your way, brother. It's oh, a really nice oh, one, man. Too, oh yeah, yeah man. it's gonna be nice. I'm, I'm just excited that the Canadian border is open. Mm-hmm. Get back to some of my water and. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Know. Well, yeah. Why don't we, why don't we kick into that then? So you're, you're in Wisconsin right now. Yep. And that's yep. kind of where you, you've grown up. You've been there for, for how long? Your whole life. My entire my entire life, yeah, I I grew up on a kind of like a farmette out in the country, okay. um, on the outskirts. Um, very very small town for sure. I, like wasn't even co- incorporated. Yeah, and um, that movie Green Bay, a little bit bigger city. Yeah, been living there almost my entire life now. Yeah, right on, right on. And so the the fly fishing, how did you get into that? Like, when did that whole thing start? Hmm. I don't ever remember not being a fisherman. Yeah. Um, okay. I was a type of weird kid. If like, I, I remember like, uh, being really upset. I don't know how I must've been maybe four, maybe five years old. And I broke my, my fishing rod Yeah. and my parents weren't going to buy me another one. They had a cabin up North and I wanted to fish at home as well as up North. And with a broken rod, I couldn't fish at all. Yeah. So, um, Apparently, as it goes, they found me on a dock with a chunk of a fishing line and a bent pin and some worms. <laughs> and then they, my mom said that I needed to have a rod at home and up at the cabin. You there know? you go, yeah. <laughs> and really, I, I just started fishing and like bought some really junky fly equipment maybe when I was um, maybe 10 or 11. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then I had the... I just kept on I was making lures and fishing muskies a lot with like, you know, double handed yeah. musky rigs and surface baits and bucktails and all those things. And in the springtime I had found that the fish were really spooky and I couldn't get a bait by them, you know, um, 
you know, even like a sluggo type of thing, the splash would, would spook these muskies that were laying up in the springtime. Mm-hmm. And I just remember seeing Larry Dahlberg when like, I don't know how old I was, maybe very young, still, still on the farm. So I had to be maybe six years old. And I remember seeing him fly fishing for pike and I'm like, well, muskies must be pretty similar. Yeah. So I, um, yeah, I drove back from a view to Zare, which is on the border of Michigan and Wisconsin back to green Bay, bought a nice fly rod, yeah. you know, they were, they were really super nice to me too. I mean, just, a kid walking in saying, yeah, I want to buy a fly rod. They start catching muskies. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't really the norm back in, you know, the 1400s. I mean, this is, I mean, guys, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. this is night. Well, I, I don't know, 80, yeah. late eighties, I suppose. I, you know, like, yeah. yeah. Um, fly fishing yeah, for muskie wasn't exactly. I had exactly, success, yeah. man. It was so cool. Duct tape yeah. and bubble gum this rabbit strip leech i drove all the way back up to a there i knew where the muskies were and yeah did a little bit of warming trend and a little bit of beginner's luck and i rolled up for it so really the first fish i caught was i think was it so uh 40 42 inch long muskie wow it, got, it gobbled the fly first the fish on a fly rod yeah dude it was crazy come on I rolled up to the fish <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because like we spot them, you know, in the yeah. spring you can spot them. We just kind of drive around and look for them. And I knew where they were, and they've been cooking them in that corner back in there for a while, and they were ready to go. And oh man, man I threw that leech, and she just pounced on it. I couldn't, wow. I couldn't believe like how. Then I was hooked, you yeah. know. Then I, then I'm like, well, you know. Then it kind of like, I was smallmouth bass and. Um, because you know, being in the rivers it seemed like the fly fishing was easier. Yeah. Yeah. And then I one one I was fishing for migratory ones and ran into a skamania. Um and then I was really addicted. You know, the skamania just absolutely tore me up. It was huge too, dude. I'm the total beginner's luck. Like that first skamania I caught, no kidding. I mean, like it's the biggest steal I've ever caught. It was mm. it, 40 inch uh, 39 and three quarter inch buck oh my so god it was, it was yeah i mean it was i can still remember it. i was coming around this corner and there's this big pool and i was catching smallmouth you know this is yeah. summertime and um i i thought it was a northern pike at first and it just came out of nowhere and just drilled it beat me up like just something fierce oh, i man. mean like this guy with the dog he came down to help me land it <laughs> took me down a couple pools and was jumping out of the water. Scamania strains are real jumpy. Okay. You know, and yeah, it was it was phenomenal. Then I then it, then I got the steelhead bug and I was just after those and then you know everything. I, I've kind of went through all the species of being addicted to catching them from yeah carp, muskies, and you know smallmouth. I mean, I went through that and just chased them out in the lakes, mm. uh, the Great Lakes, all the rivers, you know, and then. I don't know. Yeah. Like, and then I, I started, I, I fished so much musky fishing, you know, with junk gear back in the, like back in the day, stuff wasn't very nice. Yeah. I blew up my arm when I was like maybe 21, 20, I was, I was 20 years old. Yeah. And um, I, I tore something in my right shoulder and my friend from the fly shop then at that point, he, he set me up with a Bruce and Walker double hander. Oh, nice. So we started, you know, and that helped a lot, you know, it took a lot of the pressure off yeah. the arm. And then when I'm fighting the fish, I was now fighting the fish with my left arm instead of my right and reeling with my right. Yeah. Mm. Which uh, took a lot of pressure off, you know, some of those Kings and stuff, you know, I just, bet, yeah. you know, and, S- and back in the day, we used to have some phenomenal run of really these C Farrell and Browns, yeah. you know, they aren't really, super duper hard fighting i guess when they're chrome they're pretty crazy they'll jump you mm-hmm. know similar to like an atlantic mm-hmm. and they will mm-hmm. take a drive but you know um which is always yeah cool. i think just the actual casting but and now because i fish double hander so much really when i'm single hand fishing i have almost no problems you know it's limited you know if i'm spotting muskies or if i'm spotting carp yeah. I'll use a single handed rod. Um, some of the sheephead stuff, it's just more. I still like 
yeah. you know, swings or whatever. But, you know, sometimes yeah. it's just usually if I can spot the fish from searching, I'm usually searching with a double hand fly rod. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just easy. Now there's this this crazy blend. It's kind of like doing yeah. double hand double hand cast on single hand rods because it's just so much easier. Yeah, yeah. You know, like hex fishing and stuff. You're not stuck in all the crap all over the place. You can kind of just do a quick, you know, little single spay and get that bug back out there. And yeah, yeah. Just, uh, but I've got like yeah, a sure. million questions from that that dump I, of fly fishing knowledge that you just dropped on us. Um, I know. First and foremost, I'd say like, first of all, you caught a steelhead and a muskie. You were like first time out. So yeah. The, yeah. Well, I mean, no, I, I don't want to make it sound cat. like that, but I, yeah, no, 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 I know. we're going to make it sound like that. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I, awesome. I got beginner's luck. And like I said, I, I mean, I was before I'd hooked that skimania, it had yeah. been, a, like a year of fly fishing and I, I didn't really know about them. You know what I mean? Like, and Skamania, is what, that the river? Skamania, is that a river? It, or? It, uh, yeah. I believe that stream came from the Skamania river in BC. Oh, okay. Right? And this oh, is, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha, summer gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Run, yeah. It's a summer run. They, they're the, the Wisconsin DNR and there's some in Indiana and Michigan. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's mm-hmm. a summer run strain of fish and they come in, they're kind of in right now. The, they're starting to replant them. We've had kind of some pretty lean stocking because they're kind of a finicky fish. You have to, right. They run the rivers in the summer and our, and our rivers are warm. And so that can be very dangerous. And I've had a few of them, you know, I was a kid, I didn't know. And then they, you know, like I've actually had them die, blow up during the fight because they'll fight so hard. They will Mm -hmm. fight themselves to death. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have any oxygen, they just keep on jumping and stripping out line all of a sudden just, I had one just yeah. do like this weird death twirl and blood and reeled wow. it right up. Jeez. Yeah, dude, it blew, it blew itself. But, you know, what we found is you yeah. just chase them closer to the lake, you know, like yeah. there's a thermal climb between that lake and that river. And when that, right. when, we get, when we get west winds blowing offshore, it sucks that cool water in. Mm-hmm. So the harbor type of area, which they're very targetable out in the harbor because mm-hmm. um, they – you know, we're just kind of keeping a wet bug out there. It's like there's a very slow swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what I do is I keep a pinned position and I cast out again. This one more of a single-handed just because of the location. Yeah. And what you're doing is keeping a tight line, floating line with a sunk bug, but one that sinks very slow. I mean, even if the harbors are 20 feet deep, I don't care. I, yeah. I I'll, a nine-foot leader yeah. with maybe just a you know a woolly bugger sure believe it or not i mean because we have a lot of um, hexagena bugs that come off in the summer and those bugs are swimming all over the place and the the skimania will just run up and down the that is run up and down and all of a sudden here's a treat and zap you know they grab it it's cool because you're not stripping you're just literally playing that current there's like that tide current or whatever that you can kind of fish yeah 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 so going closer yeah, to the lake fish. is just like a safer place to fish for these fish because they're so hardcore yeah well and the water's cool you know yeah. you get you know it might be you know 50 degrees at the at the mouth mm-hmm. and what we do there's like currented areas where you go out like on piers or areas that kind of choke and you'll get a little bit of a like a tide it lasts about three hours in each direction mm-hmm. you know so we go out for three hours in for three hours depending on the location you know some yeah. i have some areas that are much larger flow there's a there's a, a shipping canal that runs through that's fed um by the bay of green bay and that pushes right out in lake michigan that's a pretty good spot to, yeah lots of current you know but yeah it's it's pretty fun man you get them <laughs> they absolutely go bonkers. Oh man! I, I like, have some YouTube footage of it when I was when I was YouTube. If you guys like, yeah, I go onto the Spaco YouTube thing and check it out. I got you know just some basically home videos of me when I first was working on different size models, right? You know, testing um, them out. Yeah, and you take them out after the schemania. You know, we 
you know, it's like a Capistimania. And then, yeah, and then we just <laughs> a lot of carp and stuff that just pulls real hard. Man, That's I'm crazy, sure man. Cool. I mean, 39 yeah. inches. I mean, no wonder you got into steelhead fishing, man. Like, that's Dude, insane. I have right? not touched a fish that size. I since. can't believe that. The old guy that cursed size. me. When, he, when, he, when we landed the fish, he looked at me. He's like, kid. You're done. He's like, <laughs> he's like I have never seen a steelhead that big, and it's going to be a long time before you catch another one that size. And dude, if he's right for 30 <laughs> years, my kids, like, oh my God. I have to go somewhere, you know, like, yeah. that's why I'm excited to see the, like these 50 pound kings and stuff yeah. that they're pulling out in Ludington. That's mm-hmm. keep our fingers crossed, man, that that bait fish population is coming back. Yeah, man. And um, you can maybe experience the, the you know, the, like the 80 all over. And like when I was a kid, that'd be so great. cool, man. Just so seeing cool. the fish, dude. Was, there were so many fish; it was it was insane. Yeah, you know? and obviously, you know, just seeing the amount of those fish that were coming in. Once I saw the king salmon run for the first time, oh gosh, and I don't know how old I was. I was so young, just yeah. amazing. Oh yeah. man, you see, know, I've obviously got for a kid. I've got all these questions for you just about like, you know, like, uh, just your early fly fishing life and stuff, but yeah, like the eighties, like you're seeing, you're saying like seeing these salmon back then, like, um, it was just huge, huge runs of fish and what, like what happened? Like what, where did they go? You know, actually, can I interject really quick? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it would be better to just like what watershed are we talking about here? Like which great lake? lake? Yes, great Lake Michigan. Lake Michigan. Lake, lake yeah. Michigan. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, you know, like the well, the first thing that showed up was a zebra mussel. Mm, mm-hmm, Took out okay. a lot of nutrient value. That the lake used to be kind of like this weird green when you go out and it you couldn't really see, but you know, now fast forward this many years, you, yeah. You can I, by moonlight, and I'm not kidding you. By moonlight, mm-hmm. you can see bottom in 20 feet. I can see rock structures and things when we're out chasing kings. Because we'll take, we'll you know when the when the winds blow correctly yeah. and the water's clear, the kings also move in too. So we target those mm-hmm. on fly at nighttime. You know, we usually out of a boat. Um, but yeah, we've been out there in like the water clarity 20 feet. And now the it seemed like Okay, so we were we were enjoying like huge runs, and they were still holding on strong, like north of us yet. Yeah, and we were already starting to see them waning out. And um, I forget what year that was, like maybe two thousand seven, two thousand eight. There was a massive crash in Huron, and um, all those Georgian Bay and Sioux Strain fish. Yeah, it was like someone switched off a light. We were like, you'd go and you'd see like the river was just blocked out with runs of kings like you wouldn't see mm. the kings because they were there you were seeing the the shadow of the fish wow you know there were some hmm. yeah like the runs were that's insane just insane dude like you wouldn't even believe it like they my my son thinks i'm lying yeah you know but yeah. i got confirmation from other buddies and stuff that were fishing me with at the time it was it was disgusting like like when I hook that Skimania that next coming year, mm-hmm. there was like it, it was insane. I would stand in one spot and I'd watch hundreds of them come by, you guys, in Jeez. packs, just huge well, packs of Skimania. You could just imagine them, yeah, just big wolf packs and they're running up and down, oh, that's waiting so cool. for the river to get rain to move, you know, and they're all trapped in the last maybe six miles seven miles of the lake that was uh-huh. in the thermal wash back and forth and then it went into a rapids and they you know we were super dry you know middle of um middle of like a you know it hadn't rained in right, right, right. months yeah they weren't moved they couldn't move you know there was no river there to do so yeah um but yeah and then like i said that the crash was really bad and then the fish got lean and spindly Right. Um, we saw big, big, big switches in the Bay of Green Bay. A lot of the brown trout and the salmon runs really dwindled. Mm. You know, all, all we have now is like the maybe the natural reproducing ones and um, a lot of walleye, muskies. Oh yeah. You know that's right. It's big. kind of more warm, watery fishery in a way now. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Um, do you know why? I mean, like, does it have to just do with development? Is in general? Well, I think you know the DNR wanted to bring the the you know, the Bay of Green, being 
the Bay of Green Bay in particular back mm. to more natural, getting back to, you know, mm. wall to wall, walleye guys. And there is, you yeah. know, yeah, yeah. in the springtime, there's tens of thousands, if not more, per, yeah. sometimes on a daily basis that will come. Yeah. I mean, it's like bumper boats, thousand boats. And now Jeez. the big rage is musky fishing. Everybody's going to the Bay of Green Bay to catch muskies, you know, because there's yeah. huge slaughters in there. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, so it does bring in a lot of tourism where, you know, like those that that sea for Ellen strain of browns that we were enjoying and a lot of the splake and steelhead really didn't bring the amount of guys. Yeah. You know, once the the main crash happened, you know, like I don't want to say it was a crash, but it was like a slow decline and there all of a sudden we had a lot less kings. Yeah. And this and that was you know, again to date me, like when I first started, it was, it was snagging was still legal for Sam. Right, right, right. It is my so, first year. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to say it's legal here, but I can't, I can't exactly say it's enforced. <laughs> yeah. For yeah, sure. exactly. Yeah. But Un unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Well, you got to be really careful with those quote unquote dirtball snaggers. Um, yeah. Dean Hart guy told me that a lot of that's actually organized crime, believe it or not, guys. Wow. No way. No, I, uh, no, we we believe there's a weird black market row trade happening up here. Yeah. Oh, there absolutely is. They'll go in. They'll they're doing all sorts of not even just the the snagging during the day, netting operations stuff, and Jeez. Um, processing the fish and selling them in big cities like Chicago, Milwaukee. Right. You know, I mean, you know, a, a, a wild caught quote unquote wild sure. caught salmon, you know, has a big price tag in a, yeah. in a downtown restaurant somewhere. Yeah, you mm -hmm. know, I was just using those two cities as like rough examples. I'm sure, sure. they get dropped everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, and these guys do. Uh, so yeah, um, that's why the DNR said not to approach anybody on the river because they're really worried about you know actual anglers. criminals. <laughs> that's crazy, man. Well, yeah, they're yeah, current yeah, straight up. There's a yeah. Um, so you just got to be really careful. Yep. Um. I mean, I guess the salmon are going to come in and die. It would be really nice if we could pass some type of legislation to get mm -hmm. rivers with uh, natural reproduction to, you know, give the fish a chance to yeah, for reproduce. Sure. You for know, sure. for I sure. think that's um, that's the largest thing is actually just leaving these fish alone to do their thing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you know. That's what we're kind of enjoying up. You know, up in the some of the northern rivers, the fish can spread out. They aren't as targetable. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we have a, a small number of kings and pink salmon. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, man, we're and seeing the same decent... seeing the same stuff out west, right? You know, like just like leave the fish alone. Like it's kind of coming to a point where people are starting to be like, maybe we should fish less. <laughs> you know, and it's like, yeah, fair enough. We're not fish know. at all, right? We're not fish at all. You know, we're yeah. just well, or just, you know, it'd be nice to I don't want to see find like, a system. Say, sections close, but. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, again, it depends what the species is too. Like, yeah, Wisconsin, they believe it should just be all put and take. We'll we'll mm. spawn the fish and put them in and restock them, and they're just there as a take mm -hmm. type of item. Yeah. It sounds like Ontario. Which, uh, yeah, yeah. We were we were told that there was zero natural reproduction. It was all up, you know, all up to the Wisconsin DNR and. I mean, and we have pockets of naturally producing fish, but we have so much farming land through this area. Our rivers get yeah. to deadly temperatures for trout, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. there, in some, you know, in most circumstances near me, that is very, very true. But mm -hmm. and obviously, if you can get away, get north, get farther away from. <laughs> yeah, sure, for for and, sure. Um, well, despite you know, despite the kind of problems you know facing all of our fisheries like you still you, you know you still have got a great fishery where where you're at eh? and and you get out on the water oh, as much do. as you can oh my god it's insane yeah yeah we we have, yeah we really do um yeah. just the just the the sheer amount of different species that's targetable mm -hmm. you know and i mm -hmm. consider the all you know like the great lakes are really my home water so I yeah. mean, if you consider it that way I mean, yeah. there's so many opportunities and the fishing is still great now. And I would rather catch a naturally producing anything than not, than a stocked fish. So yeah. I tend to be driving further and further trying to chase those fish that are natural, even if I catch less, yeah. if that makes any sense. 
No, totally. And now I, you know, yeah, I mean, now I, I, I always, I always just swing them, and mm-hmm. you know, I try to, try to always either get them, you know, I, you know, on a dry line is obviously ideal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, dry line, right on. I can dig it. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I mean, I have nothing. I like, I like Skagit stuff too. With, yeah. You know, bigger flies and that's fun too. Some mm-hmm. of my buddies been turning me on to that. It was, you know, one of those hopeless long liner guys and always used a floating line. Yeah. I, I didn't, I didn't own a sink tip for the longest, longest time. Yeah, you sound like Mitch. Swing. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. But he, what, did you just borrow them from you all the time or what? I did, I did. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. No, it wasn't a principal thing. Like, I didn't mind using sync tips. I just never owned one. I just bummed them for yeah. everybody. No, but no, totally. No, yeah. I, I know what you mean, though. I know what you mean. No, Mitch is a, Mitch is a double hand, cigar smoking, dry line throwing kind of guy. That's me. Oh, cool. And I'm, and yeah, I'm out there, in a, I'm out there with a Skagit head, you know, just ruining the water for everybody. <laughs> I love, I love doing it all, man. Like totally, I really totally. do. That's the, that's the thing about it. It's like, yeah, there's different tools for each job, a long line and a small fly match well. But once you want to go to a big fly, you need to choke up everything mm-hmm. and start going mm-hmm. into the sinking. I don't necessarily always like using a sink tip to get down necessarily it kind yeah. of match my sink tip just really to the size bug. Right. right, know, right. So I can turn it yeah. over. So like, you know, like when I'm fishing for like Kings, I, can you know it's not like i'm going deep i'm still just using an intermediate tip yeah you know but i, I kind of want to keep that that large fly in the top maybe foot of the water column to force those salmon to come up okay i see what you're saying nap. and because the fly is bigger that little bit of weight just pulls it down a bit that's yeah, cool and i fish at night and i fish at night a lot too so they're oh they that's cool, cool. Little, you know you should do that I mean? this year mitch so, yeah, why why nighttime? Like, is that just because just scheduling? I or? fish at night all the time, man. Yeah, I fish at night. Oh yeah, yeah. I, no crowds. Started, um, no, well, no, just fish are mm. much more willing to come to a swung fly at nighttime. Um, yeah, started chasing the seafarel and brown at night. That was the first one. Oh, well, the, cool. the king salmon were the first one at night, and then we moved on to the seafarellans. Mm. And uh, then we found that, you know, all of them, the steelhead, they feed all night long. Yeah. And why not? The river's empty yeah. and then you can go through and swing the water at night, stick the fish. And I don't, and it gets so dark so early, you know, totally. daylight savings time. Totally. I mean, you know, it's like you're barely getting out of bed and it's dark outside, <laughs> you know, so yeah, especially totally. the further north you go. So it's like, oh, yeah, man. You know, just fish until the evening. You just got to make sure, like, you know, some some places are open at night and some aren't. Yeah. You know, so right. you just got to kind of check the regs. It's cool. Um, but, yeah, no, I, the king salmon are very aggressive at night. Yeah. Uh, not, and, and the brown trout as well. I mean, similar to, like, the inland browns, too. I mean, you go mousing and hex. Yeah, totally. It totally. just kind of seems logical. Muskies as well. Nighttime fishing for muskies. The fish are insane. active. I, They're feeding. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's if I'm gonna fish on a lake, I'm gonna fish, you know, at at night with a, you know, with a fly. That might be a new thing for this year, Mitch. Yeah. Get yeah. the head, get the headlamps. Steelhead fish in the dark. Dude, it's not, it's not hard, and you know, you learn a lot about your casting stroke. Right. When you can't, yeah. when you close your eyes and you're just going everything oh, but feel, dude. No, point, gonna, you know, so you're gonna notice. You're, I mean, obviously, go barbless. Yeah safety glasses yeah, yeah you know yeah. so it's safe safety glasses, so you're not that's key those having those you know a nice a nice pair of brand new cheapo safety glasses you mm-hmm. know like one that's not all scratched up and um yeah and during the full moons you'll notice after a while you you can really see quite well it's kind of interesting cool. your eyes kind of adjust yeah, you got to be real familiar with the water and mm-hmm. like and for like, I, you know, and again, a lot of times I'll tend to go to areas that I know where the fish are holding or mm-hmm. with the king salmon, what I like to do is kind of, I know it sounds kind of weird as being a, like a double hand guy is like, I don't really cover water. I wait for the fish to come to me. So let's mm-hmm. say there's a rapid below and a rapid above, and I know they're going to come through and they're maybe going to, you know, I try to find a pocket hole yeah. where when they're blowing up through, they come up and rest. Yeah. 
and um, you try to find those little po migration pockets. And I literally keep on fishing that same spot, waiting for those migrating fish to come to me. Yeah. And that seems to work. Um, or otherwise below dams, you know, where yeah. you know there's a captive audience. Yeah, for sure. You know? <laughs> and, then yeah. There's, and there's lights and stuff too, you yeah. know, which is kind of handy. You know, you're fishing at night. Um, yeah. So, no, it's but cool. yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty fun, man. I, yeah. I would highly, I would highly recommend check your regs, see where yeah. you can go, find some spots where you know that, you know, like the steelhead and stuff, just uh, go toward, stick toward the top and go a little bit larger, you know, like right. I almost kind of double, I always tend to fish the smallest fly I can always, right. you know, like I want the smallest bug egg possible. Like if you've got huge fish and really small flies mm -hmm. and it's just they're easier to cast and to me to fish, but at nighttime I'll go, you know, you know, like a double, yeah, you know, yeah, like five and a half, six inch long big fly. Um, yeah, and then I I actually use um, another little trick too, which is fun. Um, you know, you get the glow in the dark flashaboo, or yeah. mm -hmm. I bought a I bought a Halloween mask off yeah. of Flea Bay <laughs> for like eight bucks yeah and uh they shipped it in it was like some rave wig and i kind of <laughs> yeah sashay some of that crap in there too you know and, and yeah. then and then uh just go to like saint vinnie's or whatever like a secondhand store and get one of those little flasher blobbers you know like uh mm -hmm. you know like the 1980s camera okay it yeah. just has a auto flash so you can put some batteries in it you don't need the film and you just put that around your neck and then you can kind of hold you mm -hmm. know so you can pull the fly up and just flash it a couple times. You know, I know they sell stuff like that, but it's nice to. Oh man, that's some serious it. inspector gadget. Like Tim, you're like dropping yeah. some tips right now, man. <laughs> <laughs> like fish at night, close your eyes when you cast so you get better muscle memory. And then like, here's a quick little rig you can set up to get your, that's crazy, man. Yeah, Light dude, on I mean, your yeah, no, that's, I love free I mean, if everybody got out there and recycled some of that, you know, totally. stuff and they keep it out of the landfill, you know, and it's like, 100%. totally. And every, you know, if you're going to be fishing at night, it doesn't even have to be the kings. It can be, you know, trout fishing and yeah. browns and stuff. Yeah. Now, I've, I've, I've experimented with glow in the dark flies for yeah. inland trout, mm -hmm. and they actually avoid that like the plague. And I have a feeling I know exactly why. Fireflies are uh. apparently poisonous. Oh. So if you throw, I'm like, I'm throwing like low in the dark hex. I'm like, dude, this is great. I yeah, can yeah, see yeah. where I am. Oh, true. Never man. getting bit. Never getting bit. Never getting bit. The fish think <laughs> it's know? poison. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah, right. exactly. And I eat in that one. Oh, don't yeah. eat the weird glowing one. Totally. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you can you can put a little bit at the end of your fly line though. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. kind of a neat little Just trick. See, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because then now you know your your tip it. You know, we usually only use like four or five feet of tippet for yeah. hex fishing really heavy you know and then you have a little puff you know mm -hmm. and you can blow that up it it helps a lot it it, it at least you know where the tip is mm -hmm. you know and that you can kind of, of surmise where you are in the yeah in the flow. I, have yeah hard, exactly. I have a hard time seeing at night you know so um, me too <laughs> yeah I and mean, it's weird too because it's like what i found with like the inland spring creek fish yeah the the full moons are, are not good Right, the right, fish right. are actually kind of spooky. You know? Yeah, 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 um, true. You go during the dark moon time and fish for mice. And they're going crazy. Mish, you know, yeah, and then the fish are chasing. I think they feel much safer, you know. Yeah. Uh, and again, I don't think eagles feed at night, but maybe owl. I mean, I'm not sure. Otters? I'm not sure yeah. what they're what they're so scared of, kind of, but I'm sure up. something's out there. Yeah, everything's out there, I suppose, to eat a fish. So well, I'll tell you, probably, like... We actually did fish kind of an evening. It started getting pretty dark, trout season, like the early trout season for us, kind of in the spring when the water's still cold, we can go out and fish. And um, it wasn't even nighttime yet, and, like, it was kind of evening, and it got to a point where I just, like, couldn't, like, I just couldn't see where I was or what I was doing. But what the cool thing <laughs> was, you cast, you, you're you hearing the fish rise because it was dry. We were fishing dry, there was a hatch. So you're hearing blips, awesome. and you just kind of cast to where you think it is. And then when you hear the fish yeah. take it, it's just like a fishing, but it's a total auditory experience and it's like a whole other thing. It's really cool because you're like, it's just trippy because it's like you don't know what's on your line. You don't know where like, where you are. You don't know what's going on, but you're like fighting a fish. <laughs> it's yeah. cool, man. Yeah. We just, I usually just kind of wait for the tug. 
Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm. I'm kind of keeping, I'm trying to keep everything as tight as I possibly can. So when they take that fly, yeah, it's all I'm just waiting for them to pull away. Similar to like a dry fly. You never really want to set the hook on any type of, you know, especially with a steelhead swung fly, you never want to set the hook, but you're fishing a dry fly. You got to kind of let them go down with it and slide it into them, you know? So it's kind of the same, similar. I honestly, I, the hexing is cool, but I, I, I like the mice best. That's that's very exciting. It's know? pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's pretty cool. I've yeah, never done it. I've never done it, but like, you know, heard about it, seen it. Looks insane. Oh, you throw it, throw a spinner. Like, so if you're going on, like, I don't know if you guys got brown trout, mm-hmm. Spring Creek type of things. Over you do. Okay, yeah. so yeah, design it. Design like a a mouse that rides hook up and. Okay. With a little spinner on the front of it. So you basically keel weight it and then spin the deer hair kind of flat to look like a teardrop. Or you yeah. can use a larger hook. And I've actually just cut a mouse shape out. And so out of a chunk of foam. Yeah. yeah. And then just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know, and then just like a little dangly out the back or yeah. off the end of the hook. But that the key to that, you know, is keeping that hook up out of the way. Mm-hmm. You know, you can kind of cut little V's and stuff in there. So you know, the mo- they they just see something scooting along the top. Totally. I like to I like to add that little spinner on the front of it. Yeah. Because then it's kind of you know like one of those inline yeah. spinners. You can put them at the front or the back. The back. Yeah, I've seen those. Yeah. I've got a couple of those too. Yeah, they're cool. Little metal spinnies. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's cool. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It it kind of sounds goofy when you're casting, but I mean you're just fishing a little spring creek anyway. Yeah. I mean things are only you know, 20 feet wide, you know, so it's not like you yeah, have right. to really cast far. We usually take a canoe. That seems to be the best way because then it's safer and you don't have to, Yeah. you know, there's like all sorts of weird beavers and yeah, crap yeah, yeah. in the river at my time. It's just better to be. Tell you, man, like you know. something about meat eating brown trout, you know, it's so cool. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> Dude, like we go on, like, like I said, there'd be another YouTube video with like my buddy, got a nice nice skamania i mean a skamania see for alan brown that was okay. a lake runner but um yeah we landed on on film nice chromer i guessed around you know 15 17 pounds somewhere oh around there was God. a good one dang that's insane yeah the state record over here is 42 pounds you guys this those, those 42 pounds yeah the sea for alan get the sea for alan are like cartoon big that's like, that is cartoon big cartoon big and now with the lake you know, producing 50 pound Kings again, it won't be too long. And we're going to see, start seeing oh, man. fish like that repeatedly, dude. Yeah. Lake know. Michigan. Yeah. It's some pretty good food base. Yeah. 34, um, 34.38 is the Ontario record. Yeah. That's 34. <laughs> that's so big. Too. It's insane. It's, the, yeah, it's I, think, insane. I think someone, I think someone in New Zealand <laughs> just caught one bigger somewhere. I heard someone that was, bigger you see the pictures food. and you're right. It's cartoonish. The fish is like, a blob uh, and the it doesn't even look like a like, fish <laughs> the person i've just never like got one that big i mean yeah I, i've gotten I've, I've gotten browns that i would you know mm-hmm. i would you know i would say a legitimate yeah 30 that's insane you know, that's insane back in the day i mean like yeah, yeah i yeah. remember i remember holding some of them dude they and just being like oh my gosh this thing is so freaking big i mean never really you know i i mean i guess i put a few marks i'd have to look at yeah, I'd have to look. And, you know, even this a is twenty back then, pound we didn't... man, like even a twenty pound fish, I'd be like, "What the yeah. hell?" <laughs> uh, ten pound fish, ten pound I'd, be, would be, I'd be rather yeah, ten yeah. pound would be crazy. <laughs> my buddy, my buddy Tim got one one day, dude. He, he could barely hold it up; it was massive. I mean, you know, this is back in the night. You know, yeah. this is that was a little later, probably in like around in the nineties, I suppose. So, okay. I mean, we were really we didn't have cell phones or anything. We didn't oh, yeah. take a lot of photos. I mean, yeah. it was just memories, you know. And again, you, when you're out fishing at night. Yeah, you know, yeah. you had to just, you know, our our big thing is like we didn't, you know, like didn't really share photos and we didn't really tell a lot of people what we were up to. And totally what we were doing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I totally. mean, right now I I don't have any problem. I guess passing that on because everybody's kind of spread out and they're gonna do what they want to do. Yeah. But you know, now yeah. it's you know I I never really truly feel too crowded I, I don't like to give exact spots but, for sure yeah 100%. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but you know like yeah. ideas like going out in the harbor you guys you got to give that a try offshore breeze three yeah. days yeah the lake will flip over yeah and everything moves in first i think it's the bait that's pretty moves cool in. it's 
pretty cool idea. And then because they want to get close to the shore because that's where all the food is and all yeah. the bugs and stuff are flung out. So like during the middle of summer, you won't believe it. Like, you know, like chrome silver king salmon. I mean, I've got them on the surface. Oh, I bet you we oh. could go down to the ports now and, and probably find a steelhead or two. You know? I know they do that up in Georgian Bay for sure. Yeah. Like are those trib- those tributaries for sure. People do people do it. I try think. to find a spot that um try to find a spot that gets a nice fall run of steelhead. Because mm-hmm. they will start to frequent that that river mouth early. You know, like the kings will kind of start showing up. I mean, we used to get runs back in late August. You know, yeah. now it's getting later and later. The runs, like the species, has kind of changed. They're running later. Yeah. You know, um, we used to get a lot of chrome fish in late August, beginning of September, but yeah. it seems like they're kind of yeah, it's kind of pushed back, right? Yeah, yeah, it kind of pushed back. Yeah. yeah, but the moon cycles change too, and you know, mm-hmm. and the lake also changes. I mean, look, we had a we had yeah, a totally. five five foot fluctuation in depth that's you know? insane I mean, yeah it's a lot right i mean yeah. maybe, it's, maybe it's more than that i don't even know i mean we were just flooded out it seems to be coming down a little bit now so hopefully oh, you know, recently eh? yeah wow. man they need to that those lakes need to drop because yeah. this, this is another weird cycle because i mean a lot of my runs are getting covered up by the lake the lake is backing up into the rivers Okay. And actually taking away a lot of the lower runs I was enjoying for years. So I'm oh, really looking for them to drop back down so I can, I mean, there's whole, yeah, there's whole systems that the dams are so close to the lake. Now it's just mm-hmm. frog water where yeah, it yeah, used yeah. to be good. Right. Swimming water, you know? Um, yeah. yeah. I used to, there's some, yeah, there were some lower spots where, um, but yeah, like I said, they, the lake kind of goes through big fluctuations like this. So hopefully yeah. we're seeing a hopefully. good, you know, seeing gigantic fish like I've been seeing this past week, it's that's cool, man. It's encouraging. Well, I can right? promise you I mean, that I, I know for a fact that some of our listeners just heard us say, like, oh, you could probably go catch a steelhead at the port right now, and they're hopping on their bikes and they're getting their asses down there to go <laughs> fishing. So, hey, if you're listening, you know, and you're going to go do that, just good, leave, dude. leave yeah, a couple yeah, for yeah, us, you know, because uh, I'm yeah. not going to be doing that. So just leave a couple in there for us. You know? <laughs> yeah, just remember, be cool. Flo- floating, a floating line, look for the current. And I fish a light woolly bugger, not all, you know, maybe uh, like a woolly spay with a, yeah. a really light bead. Boom. And dude, that's it's absolutely it's deadly, man. Just, and just keep a tight line and don't it. strip. It's the weirdest freaking thing. Like I totally discovered it by accidents. We're casting, we're stripping, we're doing this for hours, not catching a darn thing. Yeah. I threw my fly out there. Yeah. And I was just talking to my buddy. Yeah. And my fly was soaking, and I'm like, what are we going to do now? They don't seem to be here. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, Jack, I got one. Oh, man. And I'm like, then we're pumped. It was great, man. Landed it. That's one of the ones off the video. You should like go on right. YouTube and check. I, I think I've that. seen that one, yeah, because that's a pretty yeah, wild then, place to just like. So you're just, I know, your I'm line's like, just straight out. You're not doing anything. You're just waiting. Just dangling. Just, just dangling. on the dangle. Yeah. So just I, permanently I, I, dangling I, for hours. You just dangling. Yeah, so – no, no, it's it's weird. It's like first go and identify which way the current is going, and then you kind of cast, yeah, almost like you're gonna swing it at like not a quite, you know, like like a semi grease line. So I'm casting it, okay. and then I'm putting my tip down, and I'm keeping everything as straight as I can. I'm barely stripping. All I'm doing is trying to keep tight to that line, and then you can see that all of a sudden you're like, wow. There's a there's a nice little slow little slow swing. swing yeah and it's That's like cool, man. you just keep that swing going and all of a sudden I, I think a steelhead comes by and they see that thing kind of just meandering along and and dude they'll jack it so hard oh, and cool, the first man. thing they do is jump out of the water because they're so bright and bro i mean <laughs> yeah just i mean they're so cool <laughs> they haven't yeah. even run the river yet yeah yeah and then you never know what you're gonna get sometimes all of a sudden yeah. coals are pushing and they're feeding also awesome. that's cool man hitting on a bunch of coal or it's like fish in the salt yeah or, or you know steelhead i mean yeah. sometimes you'll be standing there too and you'll see the steelhead swimming by and be like well there's a steelhead swimming right there and you can throw that same fly at them and they'll they'll turn on it you can watch them come i've caught a few of that way as well where you spot them 
sometimes we'll get a high vantage point. We're looking for carp moving through. Yeah. Then it's kind of like big waves of carp are moving through and you can cap those golden ones. They're like the different color, kind of like a gold color of the ones you want cool. to target. And with that same bug, you can kind of lead them, try to land it in front of them. And then yeah. all of a sudden you'll notice here comes a steelhead to come through. They're they're moving a lot faster usually, but they're usually very very aggressive. They're in chasing food around they're like little cats. Yeah, it's very odd, you know. And again, the key is that slower fly that's kind of sinks, but sink like slowly. Tim, man, you you have covered off a lot of amazing stuff so far on the podcast. Uh, like, let me just do a quick recap here. You started fly fishing. Uh, your first few fish were the most amazing fish of all time, steelhead, muskie, uh, you know, <laughs> <All and then>. <laughs> <laughs> you've, you've, no. you've had some amazing fly fishing ingenuity. You've been fishing at night. Uh, I love the story of fishing the, uh, the, the waterfront because it's just such a good fly fishing like story that you figured out something that people didn't know about necessarily. And through trial and error, you had the success. It's just amazing. So it's like all that, all that stuff's fantastic. Where do the reels come in? Because we haven't even talked about your reel making company. How did you get okay, into making so, fly reels? Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, okay. So, you know, I spent all my time outside. I didn't know anything. I didn't know how to shirt, turn a computer on, you guys. <laughs> right? So my friends were telling me about this thing called eBay. Okay. So we signed on and I was trying to buy a salmon reel. Mm -hmm. And... I got outbid three times and I kept on not being able to win this. I'm just like, well, dude, this is ridiculous. Yeah. And I, I don't know what it was, but I'm just like, man, maybe I should just, you know, I think it would be kind of fun to make it, you know, because I'm, I've been kind of making stuff since I've been a little kid. I mean, it's like, mm -hmm. you know, making flies, making fishing lures. I right. make everything I'm like freaking MacGyver. Dude. I can did fix, you just, I did you build rods? Did you ever no. build your own rods? No, no, never did. Well, it, yeah, maybe once or twice, but not, yeah, not yeah, like nothing. Like, yeah. yeah, not nothing mm -hmm. like a miser, or nothing crazy like that, you know. But uh, <clears throat> but yeah, I make mean, fishing lures, you know, and like working yeah. on wood lays and those type of things, and um, yeah, yeah, and I, so I kind of, yeah, I kind of just kind of came up with that rough idea to like just kind of stole my kids bearings that they had in their skateboard and <laughs> yeah. kind of designed the real symbol around that. So you just sat oh, down cool. and started sort of drawing and tinkering and figuring out like, how do I make a prototype yeah. kind of thing with any yeah. engineering background at all or no, no, I never did any amazing. Like, this, the Spaco is my first metal working before that it was maybe just bending up like, spoons or spinners yeah. or things like that would make like musky things that go on the front that kind of plop yeah yeah, yeah. but um yeah no and i yeah so i kind of drew everything up yeah you know not to say necessarily rough but just the general concept and the first so um my my brother i was having lunch with my brother and he had just insured a machine shop mm -hmm. like literally that day and he's just like, you know, they were saying, you know, they were just starting up. They can't be busy yet. Mm -hmm. So I called him and um, paid him for the, you know, like paid him for the first prototype mm -hmm. and it didn't fail. It was terrible. It didn't work. Yeah. And um, then we <clears throat> built another one yeah. and that one also failed. Yeah. You know, and uh so the third, the third time I was just like, well, they, they were getting more busy and they didn't have time to do that. And I said, well, what if I run this mill for you yeah. for free? Yeah. Will you let me use that manual lathe and this mill when I'm not running the parts on it yeah. for my pain paid me minimum wage to be there. And I paid him that back, you know? Yeah. Um, so it, it kind of worked out so i was under his insurance so yeah i started whittling nice. those out and um you know the first one <clears throat> the first one that i built was more of an s style one yeah and it worked great man you know like yeah. i was catching tons of fish on it yeah and it was <laughs> kind of came up with a like was kind of like at that time maybe my my third or 
check. I don't even know how many checking systems I plopped in them. I mean, the yeah. original ones would have holes going all the way around them. Yeah. Um, but then I kind of settled on this titanium bar. It was like nickel titanium <clears throat> with a big pole. Mm-hmm. And uh, that one was cool. A uh, really ratchety sounding. Um, it built, you know, like whole bunches of them on just on a manual lathe and this little knee mill thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, then after a while, I just kind of noticed that, um, you know, like, <clears throat> yeah, we, then we, you know, like I ended up getting sick from polishing it. And <laughs> um, yeah, you know, like literally I got some crap in my eye. Yeah. And uh, so I made the choice to put everything then into a CNC. Right. And um, then I just ended up buying all the guys' machines yeah. and um, just making reels, you know? And, like, I couldn't believe, I mean, I mean, I first, like, I, all I do is I look at the little digital readout yeah. and I was writing them on a notebook with digital readout in this, digital readout that, you yeah. know, and you can see it and just basically grooving everything out by you know by hand and little Mm -hmm. you know feeds Mm -hmm. and watching the digital readout that's a lot man yeah yeah oh yeah it was a pain i didn't have a fourth axis the first gosh the first i don't you know 100 and some i didn't even have a fourth axis mill it was it was so very labor intensive let's just put it that way a little indexer and it's just it sucked you right, know. right. So, so Tim, how how many do you make? Um, uh, how many reels do you make a year? On mm-hmm. average, I guess. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. As many as you know, as many as I guess sell. You know, like I mean, I have a waiting list too. So. Right. Okay. I mean, you know, roughly. I mean, this last year with COVID, I know everybody else's fly fishing company was through a rough. Mine wasn't. I, I like this last year was really, really slow. Yeah. Um, this year seems to be picking up yeah. okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to say. You know, I mean, I, I would say a few hundred at least, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe more. Seems, seems like a lot. It's really pretty, yeah. it's pretty well, awesome from, you know, like uh, I want a salmon reel. Maybe I'll make it myself. And now I'm selling hundreds a year <laughs> yeah. and, and, and have a waiting list for 15 years. Yeah. That's, that's literally no joke, man. Yeah. I'm like, I wish I could make them faster. Well, Cause you hit something, I think, yeah. right? Like people wanted exactly what you mm-hmm. wanted, right? A quality click and Paul type reel, the look, everything, but they're crazy. They can be way too expensive and it's just, it's not accessible for people, you know? Totally. Yeah. And I, I wanted to, you know, like, so the, the, the symmetry series, the whole idea, it was, it was a little bit different at first. Like my yeah. first idea was actually to take a reel and have interchangeable weights that went onto the inside of the reel. Yeah. So then I could make a reel that would weigh 10 ounces up to 15 ounces by adding a little weights in the inside. Of it. Right, right, right. So too cumbersome. So then I kind of, and, and too indecisive because I'm like, not even indecisive. It's just like, yeah, yeah, man, yeah, that's that's that brass face sure looks beautiful with that silver <laughs> and be like, man, that titanium or that stainless or that, you know, and like, yeah, it was really just me wanting to build all of them. Yeah. And all of a sudden I kind of stumbled upon, I'm like, Hey, wait a minute. By using all these different elements, we can kind of get the sucker dialed up aesthet- aesthetically yeah, yeah. instead of actually physically, Yeah, you know, cause who wants to make little stupid slugs out of titanium and all, whatever I had all devised back in the day. Yeah. You know, and again, it would have worked, but it was just, like I said, just not maybe not as elegant as doing what I'm doing now. You yeah, know, yeah. more utilitarian, you yeah. know. Which is an important part but, of the reels that you make now, right? Like, they're beautiful. They look amazing, you know, like. Yeah, man, they function really well, man. Like, yeah. you, you'll have a hard time taking them out. I'd say the, you know, the Achilles heel is maybe if you drop it on the handle. Right, sure. I've had a few of the handles bend. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm repairing one right now. Flew off a truck, you know. I mean, fair I mean, enough, they, though, right? Like, it's yo, I mean, yeah, I'm not totally like, anybody's like the other day, like someone that. sent one in that got ran over by a lawnmower. <laughs> his wife, his, his his newlywed, ran it over with a lawnmower. Oh, God, what was it doing on the lawn? Yeah, that's a good question. I too. <laughs> no, I, you know what? They're, just they're such just a nice by itself on the lawn. Else. I mean, she felt terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but hey, the cool thing about it. 
it still rolled, dude. It's still function. It just bent the handle. A yeah, bit yeah. And I just, it's cool. yeah, it's no, cool. it's no problem. You know, I try to build everything as simple and as rock solid as possible. Like yeah. my hex drag is, it's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, it's got, it's basically a series of smaller checks instead of the one big check Yeah, is much more reliable. Yeah. And, uh, I don't know. You'll see what I'm talking about. It's it's Speak- the, the reels are just like stupid smooth. You know? Sick. For for sure. Speak speaking of which, um, you know, Mitch, you ordered one. What model did yeah. you get? Like what are we what am I what am I gonna see on the river this fall? Am I seeing it this fall? Oh hell yeah, man. It's a, I think it's in the mail, <laughs> right? Tim, it's in the mail, I think. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, the checks in the mail for sure, brother. <laughs> right on. I got so a, what 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 would you get? So I got a four inch scandy uh, with the black, um, uh, kind of, uh, uh, like the reel itself is the black. Uh, and this is a right classic, on. beautiful, classic looking click and Paul reel, you know, that I've always wanted one. And I, I found, I found Spaco, I found Tim's reels and I was like this, I can actually buy one of these. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah exactly. Cause yeah, like- yeah, they're, 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 they're affordable, mm-hmm. man. And like, I tried to like, really, I, I, I just sold it, you know, like my customers keep on coming back. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's where a lot of my businesses repeat because guys yeah. get them and they're like, dang. Right, 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 really? right. Mm-hmm. For that cost. I, I had a guy, a guy just ordered another one after like 12 years and he's just like, he's like, you're telling me Tim, you have not raised your costs in 12 years. Yeah. You know, and I, and it's true. I just kept everything the same. And, yeah. Yeah. You know, I don't know. I, that's cool. To man. me, that's cool. I like to have everybody being able to afford them. And, you know, again, fifteen, eighteen, two thousand dollars $2,000 reels, those are really cool. Yeah. You know, and I, I could see a day when I'm producing those as another option. Yeah. You know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And all the stuff. But I'm making a tool, you know, they look really classic, but, man, they're just tough as snot, man. Like, the outer yeah. roll frame is just, it's tough, man. You can work in real. Yeah, you, what I like about them too is got the full frame. You can set it on the ground when you're setting everything up. The reel can touch the ground and it's not scraping or doing anything stupid. I mean, if you do yeah. take a digger, you got that roll cage around the outside where everything that's spinning is kind of protected. Yeah, that's you know? that's so good. it's pretty tough, you know. And like, Key. you know, they're yeah, everything is pretty pretty solid. Man. Well, and I saw you, know? you. You get pretty creative with your designs too, because I saw an Eddie Van Halen inspired reel. What's the story mm-hmm. behind that one? <laughs> My customers are awesome. <laughs> That's you know? awesome, yeah. Yeah, I mean, seriously, it's just they kind of keep on coming up with crazy stuff for me to build, and then, yeah, now you just I, find a way to do it. Oh yeah, yeah, I can do. Like, do you ever, did you see the steelhead skin? I did. Yeah, the, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, man. I mean, those are just yeah, right. just me yeah. trying to be creative, make it more artsy too. You know, like yeah, yeah. And at first, I said I'm just gonna make a real nothing you know i'm just making black yeah. reels that's it it's just gonna be all it's just gonna be this hard coat black yeah boom done you know mm-hmm. nothing else and i really really went on ended up oh yeah well, i went off the deep it's and, cool and man people you know again it's like yeah i mean people when they ask i mean it's like, yeah dude, i love to build i mean i've built i built a lot of family heirlooms and stuff that's really special to people like yeah. their favorite things kind of I don't want to say like the favorite things on the planet, but things oh, no, are yeah. special, like you know, a family, you know, family daughters and, you yeah, know, yeah. like, like one of my customers, his son, like when he was, when his son was first born, his, his name was Romeo. So he wrote Romeo across the reel. Well, this, this last year, now finally Romeo's old enough and he caught his first salmon on his reel with his name on it. It's just really That's sweet, cool, man. man. You know, so you know Romeo's going to be rolling that thing for the next yes two billion years, which is sweet. Yeah, you man. know, I, I love building stuff like that, man. dude. That is such um, a cool part. Something. That is such a cool part of your job, man. Like honestly, like because you're right, you are building kind of relics for people. You know, like these reels are special to people, and they stick around. They get passed down. They get mm-hmm. more memories in them. Like they never go. People don't get rid of the, you know like these types of reels. Yep. You know. Oh no, it's they're they're gonna be on the they're gonna be on planet Earth way, way, way <laughs> past me being on planet Earth. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean it's totally true. Yeah. You know, I totally. mean they're, they're gonna be there forever. I can't imagine, you know. That and I guess I didn't really realize that at first after a first 
you know, after a little while, though, all of a sudden I was getting some kind of really, really cool and really flattering emails and photos and people like my reels up on their collection wall and all these things. And I was just like, oh, wow. Yeah, I suppose these would be collectible. I never really dawned on me, you know, that it was a collectible market. Oh, for, for sure. For sure. <laughs> you know, I didn't really. I was, I mean, like I said, not very internet savvy. And then all of a sudden I had Spaco and a 10,000, you know, like all these questions and, you know what I mean? Like, and I didn't even have a website, you guys. I mean, I was like, so it was, it was really cool. Listed some up in eBay and really never gotten caught up since. I just got really lucky. I think I hit it at the right time. Yeah. I was doing direct marketing, wasn't really dealing with the fly shops, you yeah. know, I was yeah. building and selling right to the consumer. Yeah. And we do deal with people, you know, distributors and things now a little bit. A little but, bit now. Um, so, so people can buy your reels like in, in maybe a couple of fly shops here and there, but mostly through your site. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, 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 mostly. I mean, I like I said, it, my Japanese isn't all that great. So it's better to have a Japanese distributor. Totally, you know, it's totally, nicer yeah. than, um, of course, <laughs> you know, like right. in Norway and Sweden and those type of areas. I mean, the guys that order them, they send them over, but yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah. It, it's always nice. Yeah. And eventually I think once, you know, I don't want to say once the company grows, but mm-hmm. you know, I've, we're, I, I've been talking about coming out with like a more of a mass produced style of real. I don't really think in the symmetry, I think I'll keep these just how they are, but mm-hmm. You know, introducing another reel that would be more, you know, just for the sale in the fly shops, Mm -hmm. you know, something we can put out affordably, you know, obviously not with all the crazy finishes and stuff. Sure, sure, Something that would be more, you know. Yeah. More manufactured, I guess, you know, because I mean, right now it's it's pretty biblical what I do, you guys. It's a lot of people that understand it. So, you know, it sounds great to make reels, but. A lot of work. You know, when it's when it's a hundred, re- yeah, it's a hundred degrees, a ton of work. and then you go it like it's a serious game. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's You're it's slammed. the polishing. The polishing is just uh, that's what just, really takes forever. Yeah, that's what you said in our email originally. You're like, you're it's like, <laughs> it's just. I mean, everything is done by hand. I mean, yeah, yeah. you could you can machine to burr to a certain point, and yeah, then yeah. then it's all up to it's up to, it's up to you. Different grades, different yeah, different grains of compounds and tumbling yeah. and yeah. cleaning and doing it again and you know yeah, yeah it's uh it's extensive i mean a you know a lot of these high production reels are just sent through a tumbling process mm-hmm. and that's their finish that's you cool, know that's cool. where you know i like to kind of uh, i dig it i dig it man well yeah. no like honestly like your reels are, are awesome i can't wait to see mine i mean super super cool um I love it. I love it. It's 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 really really good. Everybody check out um check out Spaco reels because they are amazing. And uh, if you've wanted to get a reel like that for a while, check them out. He's got all kinds of different styles and designs and everything else. Today's episode is brought to you in part by Gills Fly Fishing International. Gills Fly Fishing International provides the destination fly fishermen with the best personalized trip planning and booking experiences possible. And they run FFI Magazine, an online fly fishing magazine with articles from your favorite fly fishing writers. The magazine is filled with tips, trips, and tight line stories to get you jacked for your next adventure out on the water. Visit flyfishinginternational.com to learn more. That's flyfishinginternational.com. Uh, but Tim, we do one last thing uh, with the podcast. In every episode, we like to record five questions called Mitchie's Fishies Five. And they're kind of just five questions about your fly fishing life and just kind of uh, a little more general uh, questions. So I'm going to ask you them now and uh, and we'll round okay, up the cool. show with these five. So We're not like a buzzer beat or anything. No, no. And no. to take your time. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no, so. no, not that they're cool. very complicated yeah. either. <laughs> Awesome. No, that's uh yeah, I love it. Yes, it's been a fun podcast. So hopefully oh. I can come back and, and we'll talk more. Oh we yeah, no no doubt, man. hundred percent. Well, Tim, we're doing this thing where like we we've been slowly tra- fishing with all of our guests, yeah. slowly but surely, and uh and one day we're we're coming to find you. Oh yeah, man. We got maybe that. we'll oh, fish no. some of those coasters. Yeah. Dude, yeah. Where where are you guys located again? I totally Toronto. Well, we're in Toronto. We're just yeah, yeah we're just in Toronto. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah no, I hop, skip, I and a jump over by you with uh, Keith, and we we came over for a 
spay clay that Jamie yeah. and uh, Jin put Would on. Would it be James Bond? James Bond? James. Because he puts on a lot of spay clays. Oh, James Bond? I know Randy mm. used to a lot, too. There's some good spay yeah, clays I... here, but... James... Oh. James Bond, not yeah, to be maybe. mistaken Mike, with Mike. the uh, obviously the uh, the know, international the man of mystery, not the same guy. Not the same guy. I thought it was Jamie Cotner, but maybe I'm okay. wrong. But, I don't, no, 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 it could. Uh, no, it, hey man, no, no, wait, could, you're right. It's not him. He's in Wisconsin. I don't know. And you know, like, <laughs> well, yeah, we we drove over. Like, yeah, it was on the outskirts of Toronto somewhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. And then on the Grand River, right? Yeah, that that's right? the one. Yeah, that's where we Grand fish. River. Yeah, that's the one, man. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, that, that that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. The, we 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 floated a river to the north, my, Michael and I, with with Keith the next day. Yeah, fishing for musky. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. The water was pretty warm, middle of summer. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, well, let me let me yeah, ask we, you these Mitchies yeah. fishies fives, and then uh, rock and roll. So this first one is: What is your favorite fish, and why? If you had to pick a favorite fish, what would it be? Mm, my favorite fish of all time number one gosh man <laughs> it's gotta be the, it's gotta be the king salmon oh nice we've actually never heard king salmon never before. had that no really chrome silver king salmon that's cool man that aren't turned yet yeah a- at least in the great lakes yeah they're, they're just awesome hard to land hard to hook yeah um big <laughs> they're big they're mean yeah. I, I i i lose more than i land yeah yeah for sure you know especially when you're fishing at night i mean you can't even go after them and some yeah. of these that you get are just super hot oh i bet i mean my son hooked one and he he's just like it's not moving anywhere i'm like oh put that rod tip because he's fighting it up he, as soon yeah. as he put that rod tip down that thing started feeling <laughs> some pressure and just <laughs> It shot up she stream, did a somersault, yeah. came downstream, and proceeded oh, to take God. all of his line. It was incredible. <laughs> like, oh my God, he was gone. There's yeah. nothing you could do. I mean, it's like, what are you going to do? Break the 15 pound maxima or pull the hook out? Yeah, These yeah, are yeah. Options. You totally. know, this thing was going back to the lake. Yeah, yeah. And um, <laughs> that's cool. Man. King <laughs> so salmon. I'd say, yeah, king salmon. I like that. I like yeah. that one. That's a Mus- good one. Musky it's... would be it. Musky would be a second, man. They're nice. just something yeah. special about them. They, they make me, yeah, almost like shake when yeah. when they when they hook them. Yeah, know? like like just because of the just because why Size. like why is that? Yeah, why is that? I don't know, man. They're so big and they're so mean. I've seen so many spectacular takes too. Like they're just just an incredible fish, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, is there a sentimentality but, um, you have to muskie too? Like fishing them your whole life? I've and... always, yeah, I've been fishing them since I've been a little kid. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, no question about it. Like, we, yeah, we, it's like an uh, old friend. My parents, my parents' cabin was in. It was near Rylander, Wisconsin, which is really, you know, all those watersheds that came off the Wisconsin River had muskies and all yeah. the lakes and rivers all the way around all the time. So, uh, you know, I just I love them, but the, I mean, for some reason, these, you know. And like I said, I'm like I'm kind of like I'm a king. Yeah. Snoot, snoot too. They gotta be chrome. Yeah, yeah. Specific king salmon. The minute the minute they start to turn black, I I lose interest. Yeah, yeah. I really do. I'll. Yeah. It's pretty um, cool though. Something about a giant forty pound black salmon just bombing down the river. It's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like it. Well, yeah. When you get you hook one of those things in the middle of summer. Yeah. Out 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 in Lake Michigan, mm-hmm. like in near shore maybe 25 30 feet of water you get it get a 25 30 pound chrome king it's cool, man. it is it is a <laughs> wild ride <I> like <laughs> it it. wild ride i mean it's gotten yeah. i think Heel i've seen line. so much room to swim gotta chase them. swim swim yeah, yeah. yeah oh yeah I've already, I've already been on the piers where you can't get out on the boats and just literally they're going to spool you they're going to take all the line i mean there's nothing mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah i mean that's cool you know, i mean you can only apply so much pressure before something's gonna yeah you know, the hooks you hooks are usually what bend out yeah you know i um or you just you know yeah yeah, but, yeah. yeah. cool anyway, Kick question number two i like yeah, it Kingston. i like it i like it uh okay question number two is if you could fish anywhere in the world right now assuming it's the best time to go where would you go and why anywhere in the world fishing is going to be amazing where would you go 
I would go to Norway. Oh, cool. Nice. What's in Norway? Nor- Atlantic salmon. Big old salmon. Yes, I love it. Atlantic salmon. Oh, man. Salmon. You know, those are pretty yeah. special fish to me, too. I love those as well. You know, yeah. it's hard to it's hard to pick one. You know, like yeah, they all kind of have their own special flavor. But yeah, yeah I'd I'd go to Norway, fish yeah. for some of those Baltic run. <laughs> yeah, be that'd pretty be pretty awesome. That'd be so awesome. <laughs> it's that gonna would be happen. So awesome. man. Like if we were lighting that stuff up before the stupid COVID. I know. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but it'll, it'll it's gonna get better. And we're yeah. we're gonna get go over there. Yeah, but Atlantic salmon are spectacular, and oh, for yeah. some reason Norway would just be rad place to go oh yeah know. yeah no doubt norway fishing atlantics would be an norway. awesome trip oh, man. And it's like yeah and like like I said they like the strands that come out of the arctic ocean it's yeah just... it's wild wild really <coughs> cool fish yeah really cool. yeah yep. i dig it man i'm all about them all 100 percent about norway um okay number three of mitchie's fishies five is uh what is one of your or like your best fishing memory that you can think of off the top of your head right my son Mm -hmm. and my my buddy matt we were up fishing winter steelhead Mm -hmm. it was like first week of december so it was cold we're getting a lot of lake effect snow steelhead fishing was pretty good yeah um i was up on the bridge with my buddy and we let my son go through the run first. Okay. He grabbed the same fly out of my fly box, same looking fly, but didn't really have any weight to it. So tied it on, didn't really notice there was any weight. He started to go out and start fishing this run. And awesome, he's got a steelhead on, right? we're like oh awesome so we kind of walk down off the bridge and he's fighting this fish it's like jumping going nuts land this really nice just like a big nice buck right yeah lets it go and i'm like so how was that and he's like i'm like how was the take you know because i you know first that's what you i really yeah totally he's like it was awesome like i threw my fly out there hit the water it just started to swing and bang it ate it right off the top oh, cool man i'm like <laughs> yeah he's like no threw it out there i could see the fly it was a chartreuse fly mm-hmm. and the steelhead ate the sucker right off the top of the water so the first one this kid hooks on the swing by himself is a freaking steelhead on the surface <laughs> in the middle of a snowstorm <laughs> that was so freezing cold Chances of that happening ever again. Oh, yeah. Uh, it, it was just awesome. I mean, we even tested it. We threw it out there. We're like, oh, man. Yeah. It yeah. was like the current was going so fast where he had hooked that fish. There's no way. You know, Jeez. We, he didn't have a, he had a floating line with, you know, we in the wintertime, I like to fish a lot of floating lines with a sunk bug. Yeah, it's yeah. a nice slow presentation. doesn't get stuck in the bottom. Yeah. You know. Um, that is that is but a yeah, crazy it should be time. should have some weight in the fly, you yeah. know. Otherwise, it just scoots on through. Sure, yeah. yeah, yeah. That is good, man. That's a lottery win and a half right there. I love that. Story. Oh yeah, it was pretty cool. <laughs> like, awesome. I, I, I would not be lying to you, but my buddy Matt, stupid jealous about it. Yeah, that's <laughs> he's just like, man, the kid jumps in, you know. Like it was yeah, just yeah. like I said, <laughs> that's awesome, <laughs> man. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, number four of Mitchie's Fishies Five is why do you fly fish? What do you get out of fly fishing? Hmm. What do I get out of fly fishing? Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. You know, I just, I just like to catch, look at them, and just let it go. Brings me to a lot of good spots. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of spots that are just pretty mm-hmm. and, you know, doing what I do, it's like fly fishing is like, it's like all my family, you know, like mm-hmm. we went, you know, we went to the spay clave and my girlfriend's just like, this is more like a family reunion than a fly <laughs> fishing thing, you know? And I'm like, yeah, well, it's, it's true. I mean, everybody, you know, fly fishing for me, I just... I love to pass it on and 
all the just super cool things that have happened over the years, just being on the water, just weird things that you, it just, you never really thought possible until all of a sudden it's like, wow, that, that really just happened. You know what I mean? Like, totally. like the first time I catching a, a Scamania on the, I mean, not a Scamania, well, those two, but the, yeah. the, the Seaforel and Brown on the surface. Yeah. Never thought that'd be possible. Happens. I mean, dude, when, when Matt hooked that fish in the middle of the night on the thing, yeah. it, it was unfreaking believable. Yeah. The biggest, it's a huge, it was great, man. Oh, and it's such a yeah. good moment so, to share yeah, with, the with other people, you know, and then like have those moments with people, you know? Yeah. And then, you know, and then we get to get creative with the flies and then share yeah. the flies and, yeah. you know, and just going and hanging with the boys and going yeah. and just, yeah. just the excitement of going to like new water or just catching you know it doesn't i guess necessarily have to be you know like catching fish so much because i mean when you swing flies for steelhead it's like it really is a very it's the hardest way to do it yeah. but i think it's the most rewarding for sure you know? so you know if i'm going to strike indicator and nymph fish which mm -hmm. i don't like doing mm -hmm. you know i would just rather swing through and yeah and kind of do things maybe the harder way or yeah. just try something new, you know, like yeah, yeah. going out into the lake. I mean, I, I, no one, no one really, who does that? Yeah. You know what I mean? They I mean, just got to, you know, try new stuff. We were, we were, yeah, we were all those kids that we would throw the boat over the, you know, it, it's not a good idea to throw a rowboat over a, a over a 50 foot ice cliff into Lake Michigan in February to go fish the nuclear power plant. That's not <laughs> a good idea. Yeah, no, I mean, it's pretty hardcore. It's not a good idea now because they'll shoot you. But I mean, totally. yeah, that's the type of stupid stuff we would do, you know, yeah, like yeah, hook yeah. it up to the pickup truck and push it over the side of the cliff. And then yeah. it shimmy down the rope and roll it down. <laughs> and then we would just sit there and hang around browns all day long, you know? There you go. Um, that's awesome. But yeah, I that's what it, man. I that's dig what it. I like. I dig it. I, I love all of those. I love all of those reasons why you fly fish. I think they're all super valid. Thanks, man. So this last yeah, totally. one of the Mitchie's, Mitchie's Fishies 5, and I'm super excited to hear what you have to say with this one, is if you were a fly pattern, what would you be? What fly pattern best represents you as a person? Like what is what is Tim's fly? And <laughs> existing pattern um, or, or not? Yeah. I, you know, it is, well, it's a tricky one to be on the spot, you know, like we've, it, we, you know. It, it, well, no, it, it's not because I know okay, what good. I want to say, but like people are going to take it the wrong no, way. No, 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 like, no, totally. Good to say. I, I'm definitely, I mean, if someone look at me and say, I, I'm a woolly bugger fisherman. Yeah. That's my, that's my nymph of choice. Yeah. I mean, that's not my nymph of choice, but it's like, I, it's what I like to swim. And a lot of times I look at flies and be like, well, that just looks like a woolly bugger to me. Sure. You know, sure, it's sure. got that right profile. Yeah. It can, you can make a, you know, and I like, it's kind of like a blend between like a, it's like a woolly spay is really what I call it. They make like a, okay. the tail where it's non twist and, um, yeah. and then, you know, you can add deer hair on the front and kind of make it like a sculpin y. It's very versatile. You know, and it's cattle too. I mean, it's just like I said, I don't, I'm, if you ask anybody, I'm like, I, I, I'll show up with three ratty flies with one rusty hook. I mean, it's like, I don't, yeah. I don't go nuts with my fly choices. I keep everything very basic. I'll have like, you know, one box with totally, my, totally. my Skagit type of two bank flies and I'll have one box with my single you know, my single hook and really between two fly boxes, I'm set for, I mean, sometimes I'll put on one fly and I'll leave it all fall. That's me. Yeah. 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 And that's no joke. Yeah. yeah I'll yeah. keep it on this. I'll break on the fly rod. Don't put it away. Like not recommended by the manufacturer, throw it in the back of my truck. And then I take it out, put it back together and I'll fish that same fly. Cause I feel like they're, they're going to take a swan fly. Yeah. The fly really kind of almost almost inconsequential in good stable fall weather yeah you know what i mean unless it gets blown or something but you know yeah, um for sure but yeah i'm pretty simplistic i'm definitely a, a 
a bug or fisherman then i know it's it's pretty i don't know maybe not the most eloquent fly in the world but i'm very utilitarian with stuff you know i like my it, man. Flies, that's, what it's, that's what it's that's what it's about I, it's I it's what represents you my fly yeah. box dude like i mean i i roll some really good fly tires and they just like I mean, yeah. my flies are very effective and i catch my fish you mm-hmm, know mm-hmm. and they hold up i use a lot of wild turkey a lot of natural stuff you know? i like so, it man i like it i think that's great a woolly bugger a woolly that bu- is a woolly bugger made out of uh turkey versatile. leech turkey leech yeah. yeah okay right on a turkey leech you know if you've ever used that material it's awesome kind of like a, a a versatile woolly bugger pattern i dig it i dig it i think that makes a lot of sense man just talking about your you know, your inspector gadget, nighttime rigs and all kinds of stuff and, and your beautiful reels. Yeah, I love it. I yeah, because you can clearly look at the fly and know what the sink rate's going to be. You can look at it and say, oh, oh that, you know, if, the, if it's exposed on the nose, then it's a tight, you know, then it, I always use like tungsten. Mm-hmm. If it's hidden back behind, then I'm going to want it to be more. So I have kind of have a succession the way I do it. So if I like, if I put it in front of if I put it in front of the hackle, it's the heaviest. If I move it back behind the hackles, then it's the second one. And then the third one's pretty much clear. It's this it's is the most guy. technical woolly bugger talk I've ever heard <laughs> in my yeah, life. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean like I they're it. all they're all pretty much the same. You can look at them. I, yeah. You know, basically two different sizes. I use a lot of um yeah. muddlers too. Yeah, 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 yeah. For, sure. for sure. For sure, for sure. And I just I like to have that little puff of the deer hair on the on my bugger style pattern yeah. it's just because they they seem to hang and, and keeps everything nice and taut so yeah. when the fly is swinging through it just kind of has a little bit more hydro pull to it and seems yeah, to yeah. Keep nice and taut you yeah know, but if i want to go nice and you know dangle that bug deep you know um i can get tremendous depths with i love it Lita. yeah that's my gig tim you know? man that's those are the Mitchie's Fishies <clears throat> Five. That's the podcast. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I am gonna send you pictures of me and my real like oh, yeah, we engagement will. photos with me and my real when it comes in. <laughs> I'm so excited. I love it, man. We we'll get we will get on the water, man. You're not that far away. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. Um, maybe we could even meet halfway. You guys can come over and totally go fish someplace over in Michigan. No, we, we always want to see new water, man. So absolutely. Be fun to come see your neck of the woods. Do another podcast yeah. in person this time, so we don't have to, you know, do it over the internet, and uh, we can meet in person. And yeah, it'd be great, man. It'd be awesome, brother. I'd love it. Awesome, man. Tim, thank well, you cool, so man. much. Cool, man. It's nine o'clock. Thank- when do we start this thing? Seven <laughs> thirty. Yeah. Hey, man. Time flies. <laughs> time flies, maybe. But yeah, I thank you, thank you again, fly, Tim, man. Especially when you're talking to people that love the fly fish too. It's clear yeah. you guys are into it. Oh, it's just blast. So it'd be my yeah. pleasure. Yeah, you guys come over and we'll you come over by me and we'll. We'll chase some of those big babies. <sighs> can't wait, man. Dude, Sounds good to me. Yeah, we'll 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 PM what I think would be the best time of the year for you guys to come and you. I, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised what oh, you man. find. I can't wait. Just, I can't wait, dude. dude. They're sick. They're so big. I can't wait. Like, again, cartoon cartoon sized fish. <laughs> 50, 54 inch. You can't keep any fish no. unless they get fifty four inches. Long. That's crazy, dude. So now you can kind of get the the size scale of these fish over here. It's, I love they're it. They're pretty spectacular. I love and it. And they will eat a swung bug. So. Amazing. Well, Tim, thank you again, man. Thank yeah. you so much. And uh yeah, man, have a good yeah, night. Thanks, Tim. It was great chatting and, and we'll we'll talk again soon. Cool, brothers. All right. I'll See talk you, to you later. Everybody. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. bye. And that's Tim. And that's Tim. I love that's just I love Tim like getting like getting on with this guy. I always love when we meet people that you just like put a microphone in front of and they like, just like, they just take you through the history of, you know, their fly fishing lives and they tell you all and these their corner and of, It's so cool, man. And their corner of the world, right? Yeah, like, 100%. what do I know about Wisconsin? I mean, aside from, yeah. you know, us chatting with Kip, right? Yeah, other than Kip. Like, I don't know much about it either. And, um, nope. you know, like I know, I think he, actually I wanted to ask him about this, but I think he mentioned John Gearak at one point because I think Gearak fish mm. is musky up in Wisconsin. I was like, oh, did yeah, you guys, yeah, do you guys fish or together or something? But um, I'll ask him in an email. But I, I meant to ask this, yeah. but, um, you know, I didn't, because I could ask you without Tim. Uh, How did you even find him? 
Was it just like a Google, random Google search? Like, how'd you find Spaco? I'll tell you how I found you him. sent me. Okay, listeners at home. Yeah. Mitch sends this picture. We got a group chat, me, Adis, and Yilma. Mm-hmm. And he sends this picture, and he's like, this is the real I'm getting. And I was like, did you buy a Bogdan? Yeah, Because yeah, it kind of yeah. looked Bogdan-esque. Yeah, classic. And uh, classic looking. And you're like, no, this, it's this builder in Wisconsin called Spaco. And I was like, oh, I never heard of that. Yeah. Now, how'd you find it? Was it just a good Google search? Like, Mitchie wants a salmon wheel. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I've been wanting to get a classic, like one of these classic kind of reels, especially for just, just for steelhead season. Oh, Some, I love my loop. Yeah. I love my loop classic. It's, it's like the look of it. Yeah. It's something you can bust out in the fall and just use on your, your space setup. And also mm-hmm. I just needed a, another reel for my spay line because I've been going between my sage reel for years. I take right. my fall line off in the, in the spring and I put it back onto the fall pain in the ass. So I was like, I need to, one day I was just like, I need, I need to do this. I need to pull the trigger. And so, um, yeah, you know, I was Googling a little bit. I found some builders, you know, um, and I was like, kind of like, oh, you know, I was like, what do I, what am I looking for here? I was like, wait a second. I've got a fantastic resource. My uncle Joe. I was going to say the internet, but yeah, your uncle Joe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The internet's helpful, but Joe came through for me and I, I texted him and I was like, Hey, I'm thinking about getting this reel from this maker. Uh, I'm thinking about getting this one, blah, blah, blah. He's like, He's just like, he's like, look at Spaco. I was like, what? He's like, Spaco. That's, and then he just kind of disappeared into the fog. And I was like, Joe, what? Spaco. Spaco. <laughs> and so I Googled Spaco. I Googled Spaco. And Joe's like, yeah, they make some beautiful reels. He's, Joe was saying he really likes, uh, you know, the design because it's that classic design, but it's got Tim's kind of spin on, on the reels, right? So it's like Tim's take, right. he's taken like, you know, uh, uh, the look of, fishing reels classic fishing reels but twisted them a bit to be his own thing so it's really interesting and and i agreed i saw the reels and i i fell in love immediately with the uh the four inch uh scanny that i bought and um he's got he's just got some really nice uh uh trout, well, trout reels I mean, on there too so i was like yes yeah, yeah. i saw the trout space it's pretty cool yeah it's really cool so i was like you know what i saw it i saw it, and I, I and it is it is a more affordable classic sort of custom bench made sort of reel and i thought you know what this is perfect um, it was like June. I was like, this will, I need this for the fall. Give him some time to build it, blah, blah, blah. Cause he's busy. And you know, so it all worked out. I emailed Tim and he's just like, yeah, what do you want this? Boom, done, build it. And it's, it's shipped. It's in the mail. So sick last week. So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, because you're like your dry line, you know, your dry line, two handed cigar smoking Mitchie and <laughs> you, you need this reel. To complete the look. <laughs> you know what? It just makes me happy having a reel just for my spay rod and, a bag for spay fishing and that fly soft fly. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like all of the fall steelhead mm-hmm. accoutrement. Mm-hmm. I put it in the mm-hmm. closet in like mm-hmm. January, mm-hmm. you know, maybe take it out once or twice. I get kind of cold, bring it back out in the fall. Come on, September, October, I bring it back out. It's just a nice thing. So anyway, I'm super excited to get it. The reel's beautiful. Tim's super cool. Um, yeah. He's got, and it was, you know, it's a wealth of just, I know, I know it's kind of cool. It's just like, it was, it was supposed to be a real building podcast, but it kind of turned into a Lake Michigan podcast, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah. And you know, like it's really cool when we, when we have shows like this, where we kind of just like it, the conversation, it's literally just that this is a genuine real conversation. You know what I mean? Like, cause your point, like we got on here thinking, let's talk to him about how to make fishing reels. And we didn't really talk about that too much because we had so much other cool stuff to talk about. Like King mm-hmm. Salmon. We've never even talked about King Salmon. Like I'd love I mean, to go it, fish him, you know? Yeah, it certainly is interesting for us to being a, being on a Great Lake fishery, right? Mm. Lots lots of relatable topics there, you know. So yeah, yeah it was it's kind of cool. Like, obviously not the other side of the lake because it's a different lake, but you know it's not yeah. that far. Oh, it's still a Great Lake mm. system. Yeah, like we get we get the kind of the we get it. We get the talk. It's cool to talk to people on fishing the Great Lake. Oh, absolutely. Well, my fr- my but- phone. Well, I was just going to say, yeah, what this doing? is coming, it's August 11th. Yeah. This is coming on the 15th. Mm-hmm. By the time people are listening to this, you guys are going to be up yep. in Algoma con- country, yep. county, yep. country, yep. Algoma, fishing for muskie. Yeah, muskie and smallmouth and And pike. pike. Yep. Are you stoked? We are very excited to get out of the city and up to Brennan Harbor Resort, uh, where we will be fishing me, Idis, Yoma, and friend of the show, Nick. Uh, who's coming along? Although we'll be up in Tomogamy, you're up there working away, mm-hmm, uh, living mm-hmm. that Northern Ontario life. Um, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. we'll we'll kind of be up there. We're going yeah west of Sudbury to the place called Brennan Harbor, fishing 
uh, Georgia Bay kind of area there. And it's going to be great, man. We're going to fish uh, for a couple days. we got a guide. We were going to be doing a podcast from the cabin. So the next episode you guys hear will be the show from Brandon Harbor with us up there. That's fishing, pretty sweet, man. Drinking beers, eating pizza. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Well, I'm sad I you're not coming, you, man. I'm sad. I'm. I was gonna say I just took the words freaking right out, out, of out of my mouth. Right out of your mouth. I was gonna say I'm. Uh, I'm a jealous. I'm a jealous little little guy. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> I know you guys are gonna have fun. Yeah, I, I'm actually. I'm. I'm jealous that you get to spend some time with Nick, aka at yeah. Salmographer. Yeah, it's um, because we had such a great time on the river steelheading with him that uh, I was I was I was looking forward to spending more time with him. Yeah, man, I, I'm I'm excited to fish with him too. I love Nick, and and you know like uh, his photos are just getting unreal. He's like, got great he's photos and great and photos. Fun guy, and you know we've had him on the podcast before, and yeah, we fished with him. So yeah, we were great you know, tire. Yeah, we we're. Th- I was just like we're doing this trip up there. I was like, who who, who can we bring? You know, it'd be cool. Let's bring Nick. See what. And Nick's like, I'm so down. So we're like, great. Let's yeah, like thing. who could possibly fill my shoes? You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Honestly, I miss. I'm. I'm sad you're not gonna be there, but we'll catch up soon. We're gonna be doing tomogamy soon. I'll be up there to see. you Oh, soon. we're gonna be doing a month straight in tomogamy. Although yeah. I will say, I was out. Yeah. Um, quick little fishing report. Oh please! I got to actually guide a, a trip for two nights. Yeah. On a, some smallmouth, and man, it was on. It was like <laughs> so on. You guys dialed in and caught a bunch of smallies. I think we fished for 20 minutes and caught like 15. That's sick, man. Beautiful weather, the whole shebang. Uh, no, it's been pretty gray up here. Like, it's been really humid. I don't yeah. know what it's like down there. Beautiful, but it's been... clear weather, yeah. Clear, sunny skies. <laughs> really, like, no humidity at all. Like, it's, per- perfect. It is zero, zero so wind. humid here, dude. <laughs> it feels like it's 40 degrees in Toronto right now, and yeah. it's so humid. I think I can do the breath stroke through the air right now. Totally. It's, I'm like, swimming it's just it. like I'm swimming over here. It's whack, man. I'm swimming, baby. I'm, I'm swimming, swimming, baby. Help me. <laughs> Somebody throw me a lifesaver. Jesus, well, Smithy. I am excited to see you, and I hope life is going well up there. We will talk all about tomogamy over a couple of cocktails, perhaps. Oh. For anybody um, in the tomogamy that's coming up to tomogamy Labor Day weekend, oh, hell yeah. uh, Mitch is running a tiki bar oh, yes. with me. That weekend? Yes, Mitchie's um, Lagoon. Mitchie's Lagoon. So Labor Day weekend. Oh my god. The yes. Saturday, maybe the Sunday too. Oh, yeah. Me and Mitchie are gonna be making tiki cocktails on the patio at Tomogamy Outfitting, the Outfitter Bar. If you don't come, it's too bad for you, I guess. You're missing out. You're, <laughs> You're missing, missing out. out. We're gonna have a tiki weekend, man. It's gonna be so sick. It's gonna be yeah, so good. Gonna be a tiki weekend. Leave. We we actually Mitch, You're we ordered a pig. Navy grogs. You guys got a pig, we're gonna do a luau. We're going to do a luau. Oh, my God. I'm so down. I'll bring buns. Uh, we got them. You guys have buns? Yep. There's bread up here. <laughs> I can't wait to <laughs> sling Navy Grogs and Mai Tais and painkillers, whatever else, and eat pork. Oh, my God. That's going to be wicked. It's going to be wicked. That's buck Well, up, man. man. That's so unreal. Yes. And then the day after, we, we hit take our first trip into Lady Evelyn. Oh, man. I can't wait. Can't All wait. fueled up on pork. I can't wait. That's, that's <laughs> when I'm and, running at my absolute best. By the way, that's you'll peak we'll be full. That's peak pork meat. and rum. That and is we'll peak just me, Hit man. the woods. <laughs> that is absolutely peak me. I can tell you right now. I'll be full, running all over. <laughs> pork and rum. <laughs> pork, and mm. rum, the lime juice, and simple syrup. I am gonna be bouncing. Good man. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Yeah, man. Well, be good. Uh, okay, all those. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you so yeah, it's much. It's always good to see you too. Uh, thank you, know? you so much too. Um, uh, our wonderful guest Tim for coming on the show, and yeah. um, interesting. You know what? Well, actually, was the last thing about yeah, Tim yeah. that I thought was super interesting is the first guy I've ever heard reference like speak about fish um, uh, mm-hmm. outside of cutthroat trout uh, by re- uh, refer to them by the strain that they are. Totally, yeah, totally. So I was like, "What fish is this fucking guy talking about?" And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> "I know." I'm I was, glad you. I'm glad you asked. I was like, "I was, I was, I was like, I, I, I didn't I'm, know either. I, yeah. I have no idea what this is." I know. I didn't know either. Yeah, but he was talking about for the rainbows and the browns, which is pretty interesting. Super cool. It was super cool. You only ever hear that when people are like West, but even then they're like West Slope cutthroat, Yellowstone cutthroat. It makes throat. sense like, though, you know, because like that fish he was explaining was a massive steelhead. He, mm-hmm. He's guessing that was the strain. I'm like, yeah, that makes tons of sense. Like that's a cool way mm-hmm. to speak about fish. We should do that more often, you know, like. Yeah, we should understand our strains here. Totally. That'd be kind of neat. Totally. Where did they come from? Yeah. What was their history? 100%. 100%. I love it. <laughs> All right, brother. Well, everybody at home, thank you so much for listening. Uh, Aldo, thanks for coming on the show. That's it for me, Mitch, Aldo. Yeah, th- thanks, everybody. Uh, and thanks for all the love for our 100th episode. That was great. Yeah. Um, uh, that was 
very heartwarming. And uh, yeah, thanks everybody. Stay safe. Uh, enjoy the heat if you're hot where you are. I don't know where you guys are, but you know, cool crack down. A beer. Crack a beer, cool down, baby. And we'll see you in Tomogamy on Labor Day weekend for Tiki Extravaganza. <laughs> all right, take care. Bye. Later. You can find all of our content at SoFly.ca. Reach out via email by sending your questions or comments to info at SoFly.ca. Find us on Instagram at the SoFly Crew. Thanks for listening.